And if you want to fight me, then fight me. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, it's Hallie again. I've been gone for a month, which is actually quite boring. I took some time off to rest and now it's game time. But now I feel like we're edging into Christian Girl Autumn, which is my favorite season personally. You thought I was gonna be inspired by her, but I'm actually inspired by her. In today's video, I'm literally gonna watch clips from 40 films and review everyone's first day of school or back to school look. It's gonna be a very cozy vibe. If you need to tidy your room, tidy your room. Like I can watch you. I'll be in the background, just chilling. I'm not gonna put music on this. So if you wanna play music and watch, do that. We all have attention issues, I get it, okay? Enough chat from me now, you're not here for that, but let's get into this video. Okay, so my first film is Bratz. Bratz is like a fun Y2K vibe. I feel like them being so like heavily accessorized and bold kind of makes sense because they're based off the dolls and that was their whole vibe. So I'm not mad at it, to be honest. I do think the Bratz film is probably slept on if you like Y2K style. Okay, Buffy. I really like Buffy's styling on her first day of school. Sarah Michelle Gellar, who plays Buffy, was actually really involved in her own costuming. Like, she kind of made Buffy look and feel young by telling the costume designers, like, cool new brands that she was wearing and stuff. The styling then becomes, like, an interesting mix of, like, cool new brands, like, standard things that a normal teenager would wear, and then also, like, high fashion brands as well. So I feel like if you're looking for autumnal 90s inspo, then Buffy is the show for you. We all know that Clueless is absolutely iconic. There's obviously so much content around Cher and Dion's styling in this film anyway, so I won't get into it too much, but this look is just perfect. I really like how Cher and Dion kind of have their distinct styles. Although like Cher is the main character, I feel like Dion is a complementary character rather than like a follower of Cher. And you can see that from all her like statement pieces on her suit. Like they're not showing each other up, but they're not copying each other. They're being complementary in their looks. And I just think that's really cool. I love how much of a game changer Clueless was in the fashion industry at the time. At the time, I think everyone was probably wearing like grungy 90s looks. And then this came through and everyone was like, like they were like, wow, this is it. Like we love this, we want to do this. I feel like the Clueless aesthetic is like still prevalent today and people still look to it for fashion inspo and that's really hard to do in film. Okay, Cheetah Girls is absolutely slept on as a film for style. I'm gonna focus on Raven and Adrian Balon because I don't know what the other girls are doing here. I think if you're into New York-y Y2K vibes, then you should actually watch Cheetah Girls because I think the styling here is quite nice. And I feel like all the pieces here could be easily thrifted or like found online. Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen is also slept on just as a Disney film. That's an iconic film. That's a good Disney film. I love how like out there all the styling is in this. Like you can tell that she's like brought this like crazy New York vintage vibe to her new town and like she loves it and I love her confidence in this film. Also that look with Megan Fox and her little followers all wearing like full Burberry get-ups. Like you know that they heard Burberry was cool and they had money to buy Burberry so they literally just bought everything Burberry that they could possibly buy. I hate it but I respect it. Here's what's so weird about Euphoria. The first day of school in Euphoria everyone looks like a normal teenager. I hadn't clocked that until I went back and rewatched for this video. Like their first day of school looks are actually quite normal. Like you could see this clip and just be like, wow, this is just like a normal high school show, not an absolute mess of a show. No offense, like obviously the show is cool, but it's like, that's not real life for teenagers. Do you know what I mean? I think it makes sense for all of them to be dressed this way. Like Maddie's still embodying the sort of popular girl teenager. Cassie has this like soft girl next door feminine look. Kat also like isn't super comfortable fully expressing who she is at this point. And obviously they all progress with their looks later, which is really cool. The only people I feel like have a unique style at this point are Rue and Jules. Jules is embodying this sort of anime 
sailor moon aesthetic with like lots of cool layering and lots of really nice coloring and you can kind of tell like she's the type of person who would keep an eye on like new cool brands that like pop up on instagram or depop and like buy stuff like that and i think that's really nice i like that they styled jewels like that because she's a new girl she's also a standout on the first day of school which kind of makes sense because rue is really drawn to her at that point and like seems like enamored by her and her look Rue is kind of going for the like laid back Californian Seth Rogen vibe and I really don't actually hate it. I know she's having a hard time but I, I think considering she's still dressing quite nicely. There's real costume development across the show as the characters develop but like I don't have time to talk about that now. I could do another video but I feel like there's probably loads of Euphoria styling videos out there. Gilmore Girls has the like coziest most autumnal vibe ever and I'm really feeling it. If you haven't watched Gilmore Girls like start now because you'll kind of go through the autumn winter season and have these like warm companions with you and I still love this show. Like I absolutely up with this show still. I chose Rory's back to school at Stars Hollow High rather than her first day at Chilton because obviously Chilton is uniform so it kind of wouldn't make any sense and I wanted to show how Rory dresses when she's not in uniform. I like seeing Gilmore Girls fashion because it's wearable, it's realistic and I think it's a really good insight into like what people were actually wearing in small towns in the 2000s rather than this like blown up crazy city Y2K aesthetic. I think what's charming about the show Gilmore Girls and its costume design is that a lot of it actually isn't good and like hasn't stood the test of time but they do give off like an amazing warm cozy comfortable autumnal vibe and like if you're really into that style of fashion it's definitely stuff you can thrift very easily and probably quite cheaply so I'm not against it. There's actually so much to talk about with Gossip Girl. Like I feel like Gossip Girl deserves like a feature length video when it comes to styling. So I'm obviously not gonna do that now, but I do wanna talk about all their first day of school looks. So I know at Constance they wear uniforms, but they're so adapted as uniforms that I kind of don't class them as uniforms anymore. So I'm pulling them out of the uniform section and into this section. Blair is wearing this really amazing look and I feel like it's a really good like establishing uniform look. We all know that Blair serves 4 billion amazing uniform looks in this film. The styling in Gossip Girl in the school scenes was actually so influential to the fashion industry as a whole. It's kind of like clueless in a way, like they did something fairly new and cool and then brands were like, we need to do this, we need to copy this. Looking back, Serena's back to school looks are an absolute mess. I guess they're trying to show her like laid back vibe or whatever but this only works because she's beautiful because what's happening here? It's giving like a scruffy year 10 vibe. Because I talked about the OG Gossip Girl I had to talk about the Gossip Girl reboot. I feel like a lot of the vibes in Gossip Girl are actually just giving H&M. I also think maybe they were so afraid of copying the original that they like somehow undersold the reboot. Weirdly it's the same costume designer as well and I would have expected more from them. There are some standouts in this shot that I kind of like, like I really like Audrey's vibe. I thought when I saw the trailers and teasers or whatever that Audrey would kind of be Blair Waldorf vibes in style and like decadence. I do think Audrey kind of misses the mark there. You can tell she's really into like chic Parisian classic styles but it's not really giving anything like it's cute, I think it's cute and I think there are people who will look at this and want to emulate this style but it's not as decadent as the original Gossip Girl style. I thought Julian Starr reminded me of um, Adut Akech who's a model. I think I then watched another video on YouTube where the costume designer had looked at Adut Akech for Jules's look so I'm kind of proud of myself about that. I like Jules's look, like I would wear some of that stuff now but the thing is like I'm in my 20s and these people are supposed to be in their teens. So I kind of think that they're dressing a little bit older than they should be, which is kind of a shame. The whole thing doesn't feel very like young Gen Z. Like I feel like they'd be wearing more like Y2K brands off Instagram and Depop, like cool, weird, independent designs rather than kind of a do the catch vibes. That being said, I don't hate the styling in this show. I just don't think it's up to par with the original Gossip Girl and I don't think it's as youthful as they probably wanted it to be. Let me know what you think about that. I think the fashion in Heathers is actually so sensational. The shoulder pads in the suits are like 
businessman powerful. Although it's kind of about conformity, they're wearing like bright, bold, colorful combos, which does bring that youthfulness back into the looks as well. I also like that nobody else in the school is dressed like that. So it kind of makes them stand out and show this sort of like incestuous clique that they have where like they're all struggling for power and none of them really like each other. Do you know what I mean? Legally Blonde has the messiest but most iconic back to school outfit ever. I like that she wasn't feeling sure of herself but she was like I'm gonna do this with confidence and she probably went into her wardrobe and just like grabbed anything that could be remotely preppy but was still like fun and bubbly. I like that she has a look like this and then she kind of circles back around to like her hot pink looks. I think it's showing that like she realizes that she can be herself and also be a fantastic lawyer and I really like that costuming journey. For me giving design analysis, I don't think I'm qualified, but I think I'm doing a good job. Let's not fake, let, let's not act like, you know, there hasn't been um, a calculated push by many people in the industry to end my career. Lizzie McGuire, you can't outdo the doer. You can't, you can't outshine the shiner. shiner. I'm also not gonna comment on why Miranda has an arachnid growing out of her hair. You look like you cut out a sewer and the infestation and you look like garbage. Okay, the big one, Mean Girls. I like that there was a real effort put into the styling in Mean Girls. Like they didn't just dress all the plastics in the same way or like dress Regina one way and then make Gretchen and Karen like copycats. Cause I feel like that can be a cop out sometimes. Despite Regina being the leader, the three of them have really distinct styles. Like you can see Gretchen's like East Coast preppy rich girl influence with her Argyle jumpers. And Karen has a bit of like a girl next door bombshell, baby doll, baby shirt look, which I think is lovely. And then Regina has her own distinct look, which has like hints of preppiness, but is also quite chic for the time my mad fat diary the show is a british show set in the 90s and i feel like it really gives off that vibe nicely it's not like overdoing the 90s aesthetic like how when people dress 90s now it's giving like middle class girl living in the suburbs core it's giving my dad will buy me a car on my 17th birthday it is pure british 90s nostalgia and i feel like it really reflects that in the styling so i love that and like if you like that style, you can take really good inspo from Jodie Comer's character, Chloe. Perks of being a wallflower. Okay, so I feel like Perks of being a wallflower is kind of weird costuming wise because it's obviously set in the 90s, but I feel like they were also really latching on to like the twee Zoe Deschanel 500 days of summer hipster look of like 2011 to 2014. If you're someone who's into chunky knits, alpine jumpers, grandad jumpers, ski jumpers, then this film is for you. But I think it looks dated, even though it's set in the 90s because of the sort of hint of 2012 in there. Also don't watch this film again if you're storing serotonin for winter, like it will deplete your stores. Okay, now for Pretty Little Liars. I find Pretty Little Liars so weird to look at styling wise because I feel like it did really emulate 2010s fashion but also the styling, like the outfits were styled in ways that just didn't make sense. Like looking back to when I first watched the show when I was like a kid essentially, I don't think I even liked the styling then. So like it completely doesn't stand the test of time now. It was just loads of like 2010s trends mashed together in a way that just didn't make sense. But if you do like the Princess Lies styling, I would look at Spencer in particular. I genuinely think Spencer wears some really good looks for the 2010s in season one of the show. There's one look where she's wearing like a braid crown and a tie. That's kind of still inspo for me. Like that's really nice. I have a confession. I actually refused to watch any Riverdale for this video, but I'm including it because I wanted to drag Riverdale. Um, and if you want to fight me, then fight me. The first day looks are actually terrible. Like the whole thing is giving the preteen section of H&M. I did want to hate on Riverdale today. And I feel like people can empathize with that. Like that's all I wanted to say about the styling. I, I literally just wanted to drag it for like 10 seconds. Now let's talk about the chilling adventures of Sabrina, which is the Netflix adaptation of Sabrina the Teenage Witch or the Sabrina comics actually. I don't like Sabrina's 
first day of school look but I understand it's like a callback to the traditional look that she wore in the comic books though she wears some really nice outfits throughout the show her plaid skirt and turtleneck combo is just so unbelievably timeless and autumnal and I think it would just look cute on anyone if I'm being honest sex education when I first saw the pilot of this show I was so confused by the whole aesthetic like the styling and the set design it was British actors but with the set design of like a British private school mixed with an American high school. I feel like they were going for like an out of time and space approach by mishmashing loads of areas of fashion to the point where it's like you can't really pinpoint it to any point of time. Most importantly though, I have no idea why they did Eric so dirty on the first day. Like take a look at this. The whole outfit combo but the shoes and socks like they didn't have to do eric like that eric deserves the world you know sister sister had me in shock and in tears almost and it has a white refrigerator i was like oh, oh not a white refrigerator girl. i'm sorry i know it was like the mid 90s or whatever but i i can't explain this like you know when you look at something and you actually can't process it that's how i feel about this so i'm just gonna move on this is a direct call out to my friends who didn't watch Scam Norway. If you like Scandi fashion, but more like Scandi minimalist fashion, then this show is definitely for you. Eva, Nora, Vilda, Sana, and Chris just served looks. This is a Nora stan account. This is an Eva stan account. This is an all of them stan account. It's still a comfort TV show for me. I love their friendship. I love everything about the show. There's some problematic bits, but we can move past that. I think. Skins. But only Effie because there's too many characters so I just chose Effie. I'm sorry. I recently saw a TikTok of a younger girl maybe in her like early teens recreating Effie's look from this scene and I was so shook. I feel like this era of fashion like mid to late 2000s is really coming back. I feel like we'll soon be seeing all the like long necklace stacking, the like flowy shirts like fishnets with like tiny shorts and like no tucking in sort of style coming back again. I also feel like at some point I want to unpack why so many different generations of teens have had like an effy phase. Maybe it's kind of like a coded I'm not like other girls phase but I just find it so strange that like my older sister had an effy phase and then when I watched it I had an effy phase and then like 18 year olds now had an effy phase and now like 13 year olds are also having an Effie phase. Somebody tell me in the comments why that might be because I can't articulate that right now, but it's just so strange. That's so Raven is super slept on if you like Y2K fashion. On Raven's first day, she's wearing kind of like a subdued look, but actually across the show, Raven and Chelsea serve some really nice back to school looks. I don't know if this is controversial given the impact of the OC on fashion in that time, but I actually don't think Marissa and Summer's wardrobe stand the test of time at all. Like these are super rich girls with super rich families and like unlimited wardrobes. And this was the look they were serving on their first day of school. Like they're semi cute, but I don't think people would be rushing out to like recreate them. It's just really strange to me. Like I kind of expected more when I went back to watch this episode. Let's talk about the Vampire Diaries because Elena Gilbert's style is having like a crazy resurgence right now. I personally wouldn't go for this style, but I completely understand why people find it nice and comforting. The sort of Elena Gilbert aesthetic of clothing is really easy to find in charity shops as well. If you want more info on Elena Gilbert's style or Bella Swan's style, then please do watch my Twilight video where I go into this in like a crazy amount of depth. Should I rewatch? If anyone's re-watching it, let me know how you're getting on in the comments because I really don't remember much from it. I wanted to talk about the film 13 because I feel like it's also having a resurgence. I also want to say if you're quite young right now, then definitely don't watch this film. I watched this film when I was far too young to be watching this film and I haven't recovered the brain cells that I lost. Or the serotonin. The styling in this film is definitely what I call the like bad girl 2000s aesthetic. One thing I really like about the film though is how much the characters bond over their styling and how they style themselves and what things they choose to put on their bodies. Fashion seems to be a big part of their friendship, which I think is very nice. The style is definitely coming back. Um, I won't talk about it in depth, but I'm sure there's loads of videos out on YouTube about it. 
to all the boys I've loved before, it's very H&M, it's very Urban Outfitters, it's very Brandy Melville, but I feel like for the film it makes sense, so I quite like it. There are some cute outfits in this film, but I think obviously it's not going to stand up to the styling of other high school shows like Euphoria or Gossip Girl. If you like Totally Spies as a kid, you're like a proper fashion gal now, and I live by that. Totally Spies is actually an interesting one for fashion inspo because unlike other cartoons, they change their outfits episode on episode rather than just having one standard look. It's genuinely a good show to get inspo on because there's lots of inspiration from the 70s, the 90s and the 2000s as well. They had sensational back to school looks. It, it was just wild how good they were and I was like, was the person animating this also really really into fashion? Because I loved it. I remember when I first watched Wild Child, I was actually kind of blown away by Poppy's first look when she gets to school. I was a kid when I first watched it, but I felt like this look really made an impact on me. It kind of combined the like LA bimbo-ish aesthetic with like the autumnal British aesthetic in a way that didn't make any sense but actually came out looking okay. Poppy was super over accessorized and I feel like she maybe used that as a crutch for her sort of insecurities around her friends in LA by just having loads of expensive things stacked on her body. I actually don't hate the look though and I think that elements of this could definitely come back in a couple of years. Poppy's version of the school uniform as well was also just unbelievably cute and I would wear that in my day to day life, so 10 out of 10 Poppy. If you made it this far into my video I just want to say I love you and appreciate you and as a token of my gratitude, I'm going to go through some very nice autumnal uniformed films. An Education is a story of a young girl who gets into a relationship with an older man. I think at first it's quite romanticised, but actually it twists and she realises that this is wrong and it's kind of grooming. From what I remember, correct me if I'm wrong please. It's set in the 1960s and it's made me realise as a British person who had to wear uniform to school that like having a good uniform will actually make or break you and in my opinion this is a nice uniform. Even though the craft is mostly a uniform based school experience I feel like they were really accessorised to show their characters a bit more and I really appreciated it. I think the craft as a whole film did a really good job of taking grungy witchy looks but not over sexualizing teenagers and i really appreciate that and i think if you're into like witchy stuff 90s stuff that sort of fashion sense you should definitely watch the craft i find it interesting that a lot of tv shows and films go for the same type of uniform and i'm just wondering is that like an associated catholic uniform thing or maybe it's just the theme of kind of subverting catholic school that's really appealing to people cruel intentions is a good instance of this where the characters are quite dark but then they're wearing like very preppy standard catholic school uniforms. Shout out to Lady Bird as well which has catholic school uniform vibes but you can see her personality through it and she also wears some really nice non-school uniform looks throughout the film. Saint Trinian's is also subverting the sort of preppy private school uniform but in a way that's just it shouldn't have been done like they're so sexualized to the point where I don't see it as uniform. And I kind of wonder how old a lot of the actors are. It's kind of problematic, but it worked and it was like an iconic film at the time. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you so much for coming with me on this autumnal back to school journey. I really hope it was useful in giving you some inspo, but I also hope that it was just fun and you enjoyed spending time with me. Also, if you were tidying your room, I hope your room's tidy because I gave you enough time. Like I will check. I do have some exciting videos coming up so please like and subscribe, I hope to see you again soon, don't forget about me, don't lose me to like the YouTube ether, like what if you didn't subscribe and then you wanted to find me again and you don't remember my at? Like that would be terrible. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.